to the fundamentals of logistics. My name is Chris Lee, and over this series of 14 lectures, I will be providing a background and overview of the profession of logistics. I began my logistics career almost 20 years ago with the United States military, and I've had the opportunity to work in logistics around the world for a number of organizations. I still find the logistics field just as exciting today as I did when I began my logistics career. And in fact, the origins of logistics can be traced back to the military and the military operations relating to systems of moving and supplying troops. Today, companies utilize logistics for strategic advantage in the global economy. This first lecture offers an introduction to logistics and provides an overview of the field. So what is logistics? Why do we study logistics? What impact does logistics have on our daily lives? These are just a few of the questions we will strive to answer as we go through this series of lectures. The first thing we need to do as we examine the topic of logistics is ask the question, what is logistics? That is, define logistics as a term. It should come as no surprise that there are many definitions of logistics, but we're going to concentrate on three major ones. First, we will look at the definition of the Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals. Next, we'll examine the Council of Logistic Management's definition. And finally, we'll look at the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transportation's definition for comparison. The Council of Supply Chain Management Professionals, CSCMP, one of the world's most prominent organizations for logistics professionals, states that logistics management is that part of supply chain management that plans, implements, and controls the efficient, effective, forward and reverse flow and storage of goods, services, and related information between the point of origin and the point of consumption in order to meet customers' requirements. By comparison, the Council of Logistics Management defines logistics as the process of planning, implementing, and controlling the effective and efficient flow and storage of goods, services, and related information from the point of origin to the point of consumption for the purpose of conforming to customer requirements. Finally, the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport defines logistics as getting the right product to the right place in the right quantity at the right time in the best condition and at an acceptable cost. Okay, we have some definitions that help us nail down the term of logistics, but what does this all really mean? Well first, logistics is part of supply chain management, which means logistics is part of the larger overall business functions across organizations. Functions such as marketing, operations, production, and finance. The fact that logistics is explicitly recognized as part of supply chain management means that logistics can affect how well or how poorly an individual firm and its associated supply chain or chains can achieve goals and objectives. Logistics should also be involved in the three activities of planning, implementing, and controlling, and not just one or two. Organizations are also tested on how effective and efficient they are at managing their logistical operations. Traditionally, logistics focused only on the forward movement of moving product to an end destination. But today, the logistics field has recognized the importance of reverse flows and storage, reverse logistics, those that originate at the point of consumption. Today, the flow and storage of information is just as important in logistics as is the flow and storage of goods. The importance of information in contemporary logistics is captured by Fred Smith, the CEO and chairman of FedEx, who believes that information about the package is just as important as the package itself. Modern logistics and supply chain management allow us to substitute information for inventory. So for example, the cash register at many contemporary retailers also track what and when products are being purchased. This allows those retailers to then reorder product as product is sold instead of keeping it in storage. It is this very idea that has allowed Walmart 
to become one of the world's leading retailers. It is also important to remember that the purpose of logistics is to meet customer requirements. Logistics strategies and activities should be based on customer wants and needs. Due to the fact that different customers have different needs and wants, a one-size-all approach may not work. Mass logistics is a one-size-fits-all approach in which every customer gets the same type and level of logistics service. This will result in some customers being overserved while others are underserved. That's why most companies today take a tailored logistics approach in which groups of customers with similar logistics needs and wants are provided with logistics services appropriate to those individual needs and wants. As we move through the Fundamentals of Logistics series of lectures, keep in mind the eight R's of logistics. Logistics involves getting in the right way, the right product, in the right quantity and right quality, in the right place, at the right time, for the right customer, at the right cost. Ever since societies first learned that by trading goods they produce, for goods they could not, logistics has driven economic development and progress. Furthermore, the greater the cost of logistics, the less a society can develop economically. In other words, logistics costs directly relate to a nation's gross domestic product, GDP. So efficiency in logistics is key. The economic impact of logistics also affects individual consumers just like you. These impacts are illustrated through the concept of economic utility, which is the value or usefulness of a product in fulfilling customers' needs or wants. There are four general types of economic utility. These are possession, form, time, and place. Let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. Possession utility refers to the value or usefulness a customer derives from being able to take possession of a product. Possession utility is often influenced by the payment terms associated with a product. Credit and debit cards, for example, facilitate possession utility by allowing the customer to purchase products without having to produce cash or a cash equivalent at the time of purchase. Form utility refers to a product being in a form that one, can be used by the customer, and two, is of value to the customer. Form utility is traditionally associated with production and manufacturing, but logistics can also contribute to form utility by utilizing a concept known as allocation, which allows for an increase in production to the ideal production cost per unit, that is the least amount of cost for each additional unit being made, and allocating that product across markets, that is making sure that we are utilizing that extra production in the most efficient way. Place utility is the idea of making products available where they are needed by customers. In other words, products are moved from areas where they are not needed or are not popular to areas where they are. So for instance, winter gloves serve very little purpose in Southern California or Florida, but are highly desired in the winter months on the Eastern Seaboard or around the Great Lakes areas. Time utility is related to place utility in that products are made available to customers when they need them. Using our example of winter gloves earlier, there's no need for winter gloves even in the northern eastern seaboard or the Great Lakes areas in the middle of a summer heat wave. During the 1970s and 80s, widespread reductions in economic regulations, commonly referred to as deregulation, relaxed government controls of carriers' rates and fares, entry and exit into national markets, and mergers and acquisitions of companies and their logistical routes. This led to an increase in economic opportunities that relied on logistics capabilities. These original regulations were particularly dangerous to the U.S. transportation industry because price competition was essentially non-existent. 
and customers were pretty much forced to accept whatever service the carriers chose to provide, which meant that logistics managers had relatively little control over one of the most important cost components in a logistics system. Transportation Changes in consumer behavior over the past 30 years have also had an impact on the field of logistics. These changes in consumer behavior include the customized customer, the changing family roles, and rising customer expectations. Let's look at each of these in a little bit more detail. The customized customer signifies that the customer desires a product offering that is highly tailored to the customer's exact preferences. One approach for addressing the customized customer is through mass customization, which refers to the ability of a company to deliver highly customized products and services that are designed to meet the needs and wants of individual segments or customers. In reference to the changing family roles, in the United States approximately 60% of families with children report that both parents work. One consequence of these dual-income families has been an increasing emphasis on the convenience associated with a family's grocery shopping experience. This convenience is manifested in various ways to include extended store hours, home delivery of purchased items, and ready-to-eat or ready-to-cook foods. And each of these have an impact to logistics. As for rising customer expectations, it should come as no surprise that customer expectations tend to increase over time, which means that a satisfactory level of performance in the past might not be considered to be the same level today. There are also a couple important approaches that logistics professionals take in regards to logistics. The two major approaches are the systems approach and the total cost approach. The systems approach indicates that a company's objectives can be realized by recognizing the mutual interdependence of the major functional areas of an organization, such as marketing, production, finance, and logistics. In the systems approach to logistics, it is understood the goals and objectives vary from organization to organization. Because different organizations have different goals and objectives, logistics managers use the total cost approach to ensure that material management and distribution are coordinated in the most cost-efficient way. To properly apply the systems and total cost approaches to logistics, it is essential to understand the various logistics activities, including customer service, demand forecasting, facility location decisions, international logistics, inventory management, material handling, order management, packaging, procurement, reverse logistics, transportation management, and warehouse management. The job market in logistics and for supply chain managers continues to be very strong at both the undergraduate and MBA levels. Entry-level jobs include logistics or supply chain analysts, consultants, customer service managers, and fulfillment supervisors. Second-level positions in an organization include international logistics manager, supply chain software manager, purchasing manager, transportation manager, and warehouse operations manager. Because of the growing importance of logistics and supply chain management, a number of professional organizations are dedicated to advancing the professional knowledge of their members. And I invite you to join those organizations that fit your current field or specialty of interest, just as I have. In this lecture, we presented an introduction and overview of logistics. And we work to define what logistics is and how it operates. In our next lecture, we will discuss how information technology impacts logistics. My name is Chris Lee, and it's been my pleasure to have you join us as we explore the wonderful world of logistics. I hope you can join us for our next presentation, and I invite you to reach out to me if you've got questions on this lecture, or ideas for future lectures at chrisnlee07 at hotmail.com. Mm -hmm.